Good day to one and all. This is Dr. Sivaraman of iNoIndices.com. Hope I am audible. Let me display the PowerPoint presentation. Asian session live market analysis on April 4th is a new month. Between 5 and 5.30 GMT, we will use the live market code page as a tool to track the market. Let me give the link for the same. I'll also focus the camera over that of the live market code page. Now we should be able to see the live market code page. Euro is trading around 1.4225, 1.4227, 1.4209 is a low, 1.4267 is the high. They made a brief upward shop and, and then made the drop in the case of Euro and currently showing about 7 pips negative net change. And in the case of GBP, it was holding and slowly it is making the rise 1.6141, 1.6145 are the current levels, 1.6105 is the low, 1.6143 is the high, 35 pips positive net change is seen. When Euro is showing negative net change and CH of, I mean GBP is showing positive net change, we can understand that they are trying to do the contrarian move. As a result, Euro GBP is trading around 0 0.8810, 0 0.8813, 0 0.8812 is the low, 0 0.8839 is the high, 22 pips negative net change is seen because GBP has gained more the denominator when compared to that of the Euro. So this is how they handle the crosses by making contrarian moves. So we should be able to understand what they are trying to do at the current level so that accordingly our trading decisions can be made either in the majors or in the crosses. Now going back to that of Friday, you know that before that of the non-form payroll, they just made the small firming up move during the early European session and started sliding before that non-form payroll. When the non-form payroll become positive, then they made further drop and then subsequently used the term risk appetite and gained the levels in the case of Euro and GPP. This is how they create the market sentiment before the data release and make the people think that okay that is the end of Euro rise and it's going to drop. So that is how they create that and slowly made the drop and when they made the drop during the gap time which indicated that they wanted to gain back during that of the session. So you know very well the gap time moves are false moves. Then subsequently during that year session they started holding around 1.41 and then gained about 100 pips from there. From that of the low about 150 pips but from that of the start of the European session they gained about 100, 100 plus pips and gone to 62 area. But in the case of GBP they just came below that of 1.60. They went down to that of 1.5978 and then started gaining the levels along with it of Euro but they are not gained that much level on that day because there are a lot of short sellers in the case of Euro GPP cross so they want them to do the short covering so that is why they have been gaining that level about 50 to 60 pips above the current level on Friday and induced them to do the short covering. Now you find a totally reverse condition that GBB is gaining more when Euro is not gaining and it's showing about 5 pips negative net change. So this is how they make the moves in the market. One need to understand that what the players are going to do next. Accordingly if you take our trading decisions then it will be easy for us to make money from that other market. Otherwise if we go into that of the in-depth analysis of the fundamentals then probably we will spend quite a lot of time with regard to the fundamentals by the time the market reversed we would not have taken any position to capture the profit. So this is the situation you come across in the market. Sudden turnaround happens in the market and that we should be able to envisage when they stop cutting the low for more than 10 minutes during the gap time we understand that they wanted to gain back the levels. So 
If you are able to understand and use the live market code page, then it will be easy for us to track them. And also during that particular time, they showed 4080, 4080 three times in the Eero when it was trading around 40, 45, 40, 50 level in the bid, they showed it. Then subsequently made the gain to 1.41 and again they showed 1.4134 as the bid when asked was about 1.4105. So then again they made the quick rise. So as I explained many times that they show in the bid and the ask alternatively, if they show it, then you have to track it. And if they show three times, the bid, ask, bid, and finally stop with a higher level bid, then they will be able to see a small dip as a false move before starting the rise. During such small dip, we can take a buy and we will be able to see a definite profit in there. So that is the advantage of using the live market code page to read. Otherwise, we have to find or we have to wait for the candles to get closed. Then only we will be able to take the decision by the time the market is not going to wait for us to take the positions. Now, coming to the Dow of Yen, USDN is trading comfortably around 84.14, 84.17. And you know that they gained the level all through the day on Friday. And people thought that they could reverse it during that of the non-form payroll. But when Euro and GPP were raising or making the upward spike, USDN and USDCHF have not made any move. Finally, they made a drop from that of 0 0.93 to 92 area in the case of CHF. But in the case of Yen, they have been simply folding it. So, you know that the players alternatively handle the currencies in order to handle the respective crosses also. So it depends upon the traders pending positions. So many of the traders would have taken the sell positions in the case of USDN thinking that after the non-form payroll it is expected to drop and people were talking about 80 to 90, 80 to 95 as the strong resistance. They simply breached and went up to 84 level. So this is how when you consider it as a strong resistance they simply breach it without any hesitation because they know very well the traders have taken according to that of the technical analysis or fundamental perspective they have taken the positions and the players will simply use a different terminology like risk appetite and then gain the levels in the case of Vero and GBV you can understand it is risk appetite what about USDN and it has lost its glamour and it was trading around 80 and simply come to 84 level. And here you come across a USD gaining move. Now again in the case of GBP, you find 36 pips positive net change and the case of Yen about 9 pips positive net change. Then you find Euro Yen is gaining more, 47 pips it has gained already. And so Euro Yen and GBP Yen, they started gaining and today they could gain the levels by making the contrarian move and make for the volatile moves from tomorrow. So don't think that they will continuously rise. They will only just breach all the resistance what you calculate and they, when you try to take sell positions, they breach all and induce the traders to do the short recovery and turn long. Once the traders turn long, they drop it. So if you understand this concept well, then you will not become biased just like that when the market sentiment is being created. The case of CHF and very frequently they are doing 100 pip move nowadays. So this is the way they make the wide range swings before making further gains. So they went up to 90 to 50 earlier on the week and came down to 91. Then again 93 area and then came down to 92. So this is the way they shift to the trading zone after making the wide range swings. So here's the CHF is expected to gain further levels by making this sort of wide range swings and then slowly you will find the higher lows being formed then later on everybody will recognize that it is in the uptrend when Euro is in the uptrend people might question how come CHF could be in the uptrend but that is how they do the contrarian move and will say that there is no more safe haven strategy with regard to USD CHF and USDN probably 
they find gold or any other alternative currency as the safe haven. Then now you come across Canadian dollar as trading around the right of 96 area and come to that of the bottom of 96, 9621 has become the low, 9643 is the high, 10 pips negative net change is seen. Slowly they wanted to bring down Canadian dollar here with the excuse of oil price going up. Then subsequently they are expected to reverse. Probably they may go to that of 95 area or 94 area and then reverse Canadian dollar. And you know very well the commodity pairs lead the rally and lag behind. That you have to keep it in mind. Now Australian dollar it is trading around 1.0383, 1.0386. No, which has the earlier high and they have been holding there and they formed a new high 1.0421 the low is 1.0381 and one fifth negative net change seen and you find that Canadian dollar and Australian dollar are showing negative net change that means they want to focus more on the contrarian move in some pairs making the USD gaining moves and certain other pairs making the USD loosening move weakening move and that way they will just shift the money from one currency to the other currency and as a result you will find the, the crosses are expected to make big moves. Now in the case of Euro GBP they are expected to come to that 87 area and again they probably they may visit 88 area. So they will be making wide range swings in the case of the crosses now. Now Euro CHF. Whole of last month, we have seen it was coming up to 1.30 and came down, and it went up to went down to 1.24 level, and then it's been hovering around, making big swings, and which is unusual. And now you find that it is comfortably trading around 1.3149, 1.3153. So anybody who has taken a good buy level around 1.26 or 1.2728 level. They have been discouraging them to take the long position and the players are the only privileged people to take the long position. That is how they make it. So one needs to have enormous mental strength and also the equity uh, capability of holding the positions. Only then they will be able to make such big profits like that of the big players. Now it is showing a low 1.3141, 1.3184 and 0, 0 is the net change because euro is showing neutral and no net change here zero is the net change and in the case of CHF it is about zero zero so because both are in zero zero level you find euro CHF is also around the same level probably they may just make a brief downward move because they wanted to handle the crosses make a downward stop and, and that is why they are holding it closer to the 41 40 31 46 31 49 after the downward stop and they are expected to gain back the levels and in the case of uh, commodity pairs if you carefully understand that they are making the USD weakening move in a very strong way and Australian dollar they have come to 1.04 level and you know that when they are making slow gains of this nature you may call it as a carry trade or whatever it is they do that circular trades and gain the levels here and so that any level you try to take a sell they will show you loss you have to do the short recovery but if you try to take a buy position probably you can get about 10 20 pips or 30 pips profit so this is nothing but a holding and selling with little bit of firming up every time so wait for a quick move in the case of Australian dollar probably they may even show it up to 1.058 appears and then later on if you try to sell they will be able to make quick drop and those who are disciplined in their trading like after the position is taken one keep a stop and once the position makes profit keep stop at entry such people will be able to get the real benefit out of the market and if you hesitate and try to take positions and you don't keep stop just because they are hitting the stops out of our laziness if you avoid keeping stop then probably you might see that they are not giving us any reward now slowly Australian dollar is gaining the level it has come to that of 3 pip positive net change 
GBP is quickly gaining the level when euro is showing still negative net change. It has breached the high. So this is how they are making the moves in order to alternatively in order to handle the crosses. So we will just go through the forecast and later on see the initial lows and the highs formed and later on discuss about what could happen during this time. So during the Japanese session, swing and rise moves are expected. So they could quickly gain the level. Then after gaining the levels, they could they are expected to make further rise during that of the uh, early European session and start making the slide. And during US session, they are expected to make a slide and gain back. So either way swings could be seen during that US session in order to neutralize the uh, sentiment what they are created on Friday, like risk appetite. So risk appetite is an appetite for a short phase and not for a long time because once the risk appetite is seen then subsequently if it is quenched then obviously you will find the satiated condition the market comes down again and then later on they have to create some more uh, risk appetite or risk aversion strategies and then subsequently gain the levels. So this is what they are expected to do, gaining the levels during that of the European session, afterwards a slide and further slide during that of the US session. Just opposite of what they had done on Friday. So either way swings can be seen for the week beginning. And so week beginning false move could be seen during that of the late European session and the early US session. And now with regard to the expected market moves in this particular week. Earlier I was telling that in the month of April, the market is expected to make good slide. But now after seeing the type of moves they have done in the market, it is evidential that they could make more sideways moves rather than deep corrections and then subsequently take up Euro and GBB so that at the higher levels. So that is what being expected at the current market level. Now coming to this particular week, so on 5th, that is tomorrow, 5th of April, so there could be an upward move during that of the Japanese session and a quick drop during that of the uh, European session start and then started gaining the levels for the day. Then on 6th Wednesday, there could be very good gaining moves starting from the market, sudden spikes could happen during that of the European session. On Thursday, you come across the two important events, namely BOE as well as ECB are expected to announce the interest rate and everybody is anticipating or it is almost like a fact now that ECB is expected to increase the interest rate. And people are worrying whether or people are wondering whether it, it is already incorporated in the pricing or there could be further rise. So according to my algorithm, so there could be a, a rise in the case of Euro and GBB on Thursday. After that, uh, before that BOE interest rate announcement, there could be a drop and then followed by that after the announcement of BOE, there could be a rise and further rise after the interest rate announcement of by ECB and after the press conference, you will come across further rise. And during the US session on that day, they could make some volatile moves creating uncertainties. And on 8th, the coming Friday, they could make a quick drop during that of the Japanese session and a quick gain during that of the US session. So that is how they are expected to handle the market depending upon the traders are being influenced by the market sentiment and trying to act against them on a daily basis. Session to session, they try to create the sentiment and act against the traders. That is why you find the initial swings and followed by that rise or an initial rise and followed by that of the swing. Once you agree with that of the sentiment and go with the positions, they just show the opposite. So that is how 
they are expected to make the moves in the market and if you are able to understand that then we will not really perturbed or we will not get confused whether this particular sentiment or the other sentiment either used weakening or the used the strengthening sentiments could continue forever now coming to the of the initial lows and the highs we find euro formed the low of 1.4209 and 1.4267 is a high still the low and the high are not breached and in the case of gbp 1.6105 was the low and 1.68 was the high but now you find that 1.6167 has become the high 30 pips above that of the initial high they formed the new high then in the case of chf 9234 is the low 9262 is the high and you find 9234 is not breached and 9262 is also not breached they are holding it in a narrow range of 28 pips and the case of yen 8406 and 8437 are level you find they are intact and in the case of australian dollar 1.0383 sorry the breach the low in the case of australian dollar by 2 pips sorry and the high is intact so they wanted to make some more slide in the case of australian dollar and then take it out so that is how they will do it probably if you try to take sell we can get about 10 to 15 pips then in the case of canadian dollar 9628 is the low 9643 is the high now you find that 9620 has become the low they breached the low in the case of australian dollar they breached the low in the case of canadian dollar so you can understand that they wanted to make the contrarian moves in the market so if you are able to understand the gbp they breached the high us the gaining move sorry weakening move and in the case of australian dollar they are making the usd gaining move by making a small dip and in the case of canadian dollar they breached the low as a usd weakening move so you can understand two currencies are making <coughs> that is gbp and canadian dollar are making the usd weakening move australian dollar is making usd gaining move so this is how they just make a small swings and handle the crosses to start with during the japanese session or the asian session let me minimize the powerpoint presentation and take up the questions which are asked here i'll meanwhile focus the camera over to the live market good page now robert the bid ask technique you mentioned was interesting uh was, was it that if they show a level in the three times when we take a position expect to continue higher so that is what you need to read it whether they wanted to gain the levels or drop the level i explained earlier also in my trading system how they show that so if they show a higher bit alternate with higher rs then again a higher bit and higher rs then again the third time higher bit and no higher rs then you will find a small dip of one or two pips or three pips then started gaining the levels but instead they show a higher bit and higher ask and no more higher bit then you will find after about one or two pips gain they will start dropping only if they show once so what it means so they check in the interbank treasury whether there are higher level bids i mean higher level stops or higher level limits so at the highest level similarly they show it at the lower side also so on the higher side they will check whether there are stops about 20 30 pips above the current market level or there are limit orders if there are limit orders what it refers it refers that the traders have taken the long position they kept the limit order to exit so obviously they will not just like that give the profit and straight drop it if there are higher level stops that means the traders have already taken the sell positions at the lower level they kept the stop there then they start rising and hit the stops give it to them at the highest level 
Then afterwards, we have to see whether they are showing for the higher bid and uh, for making further rise. So this we need to read uh, frequently. We don't know when they will show it because very frequently they check it. We won't be knowing it, but that will not be seen in a filtered Lima market code page and also in the case of the charts. So only when which is coming from that of the interbank treasury a unfiltered codes you will be able to see this sort of codes. So make use of it. These are all the simple technique they use to communicate. So we should be able to understand that. Then DD. What do you see first 1.62 or 1.61 in GBP? I'm expecting JBB to show 1.62 first because they wanted to aggressively gain the levels as they were cut the high and sustain above that as a high. So you also can say that instead of asking me. They breached the initial high and staying above there for 30 minutes. So that means they wanted to rise further up. If it is a stop and they would have come below that of 1.6138 in less than 30 minutes. Whereas it is an extended move so far. After two hours also if they are not coming down, then it is an intentional move. Till the start of the US session, they intend to gain the levels. So you can understand that will be the time limit for that. So don't short GBP. Probably you try to buy and book profit during start of the US session. So how easy the trading decision becomes once you are able to track the market you following the type of moves they make in the market. They knew it. What is the trigger during Friday session? which made you change your view forecast. The Euro and GBP will reverse the trend from last week of April. Yeah, that is what I explained to it, that uh, when the traders, uh, when the players wanted to book profit with regard to their buy positions, they find that the traders are also selling. And after a good non-form payroll, they started traders holding long positions, liquidated quickly the long and turned short. Okay, the non-form payroll is good, so here's the gaining moves could be seen. So they just liquidated the long and turned short in order to take advantage of it or in order to earn back the last money by cutting the long positions. And that was shown by the quick move and the gap time stop on, on the downside. And such crucial days, if you focus more on the non-form payroll, you fail to recognize the gap time move. The non-form payroll is over by 12.30 GMT. The market has reacted for that. Then afterwards, you have to follow the moves to a close of the uh, European session, the moves during that the gap time, session start time and they have to come to that of the your market reading rather than reading in depth what could be the next non-form payroll. Okay, fine, you can do that analysis but you have to wait for the results to happen. So if you systematically follow the market timings, what I have given, that is not my own timings, it's the timing used by the other players and also try to identify the type of moves, you will be able to really judge where they are taking the market. So the forecast was telling that April, they are supposed to make the drop and that made, the, and that was become invalidated when they made the gap time move and also quickly gained the levels as expected. On, uh, during the, the US session, I mean, so once they gain the levels, then you find that they intend to make only sideways move. From that of the bearish condition with regard to Euro and GDP, it is turned to be sideways. So you wanted me to give a fine-tuned forecast. So when I fine-tune the forecast and give it, then you are questioning why you have changed it. Because many of the people were telling that I need to update my forecast and do the reading properly and give it. And that's what I did on Friday. Do you expect a lower level in USDN before further upside? No, I don't think so. They may make a big drop in the case of USDN. 
probably they may 100 to 150 pips swing can happen any time you know very well when all the traders turn long around 84 they could show 83 and then come back to 84 85 but up to 86 level they are expected to slowly gain it then afterwards start making volatile move and bring it to normal same again USD yen so it was in the extreme level like similarly CHF and also Canadian dollar and Australian dollar they are all kept at the extreme levels Euro and JBB they are in the tradable levels the other currencies are in extreme levels and they are expected to come out of this because they are not in a position to book enough profit and build sell positions they are not dropping Euro and GBP more reduced volume from that of the traders is one of the condition or one of the cause for this sort of change in the trend when the traders equally participate by taking good volume of positions then the players could make big moves then Gregor uh, you have explained Australian dollar to USD or CHF to USD could be the good currency for currency uh, okay which one is the good one for either Australian dollar to USD or CHF to USD instead of betting everything in one currency you take in both so that you spread the risk once the risk is spread you find we are in a very comfortable position because even if one currency gives a nominal profit the other currency could give aggressive profit <coughs> so currency conversion trade is something different and again in the currency conversion trade suppose you want to do convert 100k of a particular currency to another currency don't do all in one level you just do about 10 percent of it at one level and see how far it goes and when it start making profit consistently for about two days then convert another 20 to 30 percent even at a lower level doesn't matter because in the currency conversion whatever the pip ranges you come across after the second is you know, they are not reflected in the currency conversion you know very well so probably you may lose a few cents doesn't matter you can do the currency conversion say for example you are converted at 1.03 some Australian dollar to US dollar then they are taking it to 1.42 then in that case convert another 10 percent and see how far they are doing it so even if they rise it 1.307 or 08 you will have some more money to convert and finally you find that they cannot take it all the way up they have to bring it down so you will find that on an average you will be holding the currency the higher level so spread the risk is the most important thing suppose you have got a capacity based on your equity you can take about five lot position at a given time don't take all five lots as a bet understand the market can always or any given time can go against me keep that as an objective view then in that case you will take only one percent or of the five lots you will take only one lot and just to test the market and this way if you do it even without a stop you can do it but if you take all the five positions at one stroke then you have to necessarily keep stop because if the market goes against and your equity will be eroding for all the five lots corresponding to the five lots so if you spread the risk and also diversify the risk instead of betting on one currency you bet on two or three currencies that money spread over so that if one currency fails the other two currencies might be able to give you the profit then your opinion Australian dollar I have been explaining it so Australian dollar they could they had taken it up to 1.04 and still the upward stop and extended stop and is not seen so they could hold for some more time then M drive initial low from Friday versus low from today is about 40 pips difference in USDCH will it close the gap or of this week the lows will be higher and higher see let me tell you uh, M drive that 
there is no necessity for the players to fill the gap. So sometimes they fill the gap, sometimes they don't do it. And it all depends upon the traders' spending positions. And on Friday, they took it up to 93 and dropped it to 92 area. So a lot of long holders, they would have simply closed the long position in CHR. And in that case, and turned short, thinking that when Euro is spiking up, CHR could drop. So they would have just liquidated. That is why they opened it at a higher level and holding it here with a positive net change. And now, they may or may not fill the gap. There is no guarantee. And it appears to me that they are not breached the low. And similarly, when GPP is gaining the levels, Euro is not making a positive net change. It came up to 0, 0 level. Similarly, CHF came to 0, 0 level. And again, they started making the reverse. And also, they wanted to make only a brief downward stop. And in the case of Euro CHF, so, there is less chance for them to breach the initial low and go below. But as we proceed, we may know, because if all of a sudden if the traders uh, just liquidated the short positions or just do, done the short covering and turn long, then they may make a downward stop and hit the stops and go up. So, what I read now with regard to the Asian session, it may not be applicable throughout all the three sessions. So we have to read the moves every session and understand it. Then Gregor, if Euro should rise, why don't uh, pick Australian dollar, Euro or CHF for Euro for con conversions? No, see, uh, you can pick up Euro, but see, is relatively strong, Australian dollar is also strong. From one stronger currency to another stronger currency to convert it. And you should be able to convert back to that of the weakest currency. It may gain about 300 pips or 400 pips afterwards it is expected to drop. And obviously you know that they will always come back to that of the US dollar. The main currency of the players are the US dollars. So, if you convert back to that of the US dollar in the long term currency conversion trade, you will be really benefited. Because, see, in currency conversion, the banks may not give you a very tight spread, allow two pips, three pips. They might be telling that 30 pips to 100 pips. Some banks even charge 200 pips for currency conversions. And in such a scenario, you need to gain about 1000 pips in order to earn a substantial money. That is what I am trying to tell you. And if you want quick trades, if your bank is offering about 5-10 pips spread, then probably you can do that. Then Pip Bully, if the GBP reaches the high before the gap time, is it possible to take a technical trade, buy and sell trade? Yes, because it has already reached the high and staying above in this particular session. The next session for the first 30 minutes also, if it stays above that, then you can do a technical trade. Then NASCO, when do you expect a possible top for Euro and GBP? Uh, may not be in this particular month. And next month, we could see further rise in the case of Euro. And in the month of June, you will come across some moves upward. So more in sideways and upward moves could be seen in the case of Euro and GDP. So any level you buy, hold patiently, they might be able to show you profit. Then DDPT, I miss your earlier comments on Euro and GDP. Please repeat your view on show the market reading. Yeah, I'll show all those things. I have been explaining that there could be some sideways moves in the case of Euro and GBB for the first two days in this week and probably from Wednesday we could come across for the days. And during this day today, there could be more gaining moves in the case of GBP. Then you would. Now, my question was to understand the trigger 
learn to identify such triggers not to criticize you changing the focus one okay fine i understand no i am just telling you that i am fine tuning it depending upon the market condition i give you overall uh, interpretation with regard to the forecast and wanted to emphasize more on the market reading and try to uh, modify and give as approximate forecast as possible that is the only objective no i am not taking it as a criticism i i just explained it based on the earlier feedbacks gb uh, when can we see the trend reversal in oc dollar probably uh, in this week you should be able to see some profit booking moves what is gap gap not gap uh, gap time is the time uh, in between the sessions 30 minutes time frame in between the sessions so uh, europe japanese session gets over by 7 gmt 7:30 the european session starts now after the incorporation of daylight saving system and that 30 minutes is considered as a gap time during which uh, the banks in certain regions will close all the official currency conversion trades the banks in the re other region will start after 30 minutes during that gap time the players use their specific type of orders like all or none orders and try to hit the stops trevor you say that the players have way of seeing traders positions stops and limits can they also see pending orders yes obviously these orders are nothing but the pending orders no stops and limit or the pending orders on the upside or the downside see your broker can see that right your broker can see if the broker can see it is not a secret it is a open secret anybody can see only our login is secured nobody will be able to place a trade but the player i mean the brokers can place a trade there there are some brokers you know if they find that you are earning good money they simply enter a loss making trade and reduce your equity a lot of things are going on in that broker side will loss it go up to 1.05 yeah there is a potential it appears okay what is all our none order i explained i think when newcomers come and start asking questions every day then becomes a problem i know all our none is nothing but a specific type of order like a 50000 lots buy order at 1.43 when euro is around 1.4224 so that order will search up to 1.43 whether any matching sell order is there so it will not buy all the levels of selling it will only jump that is why you find that the brokers are not able to fill your orders whenever a gap happens in the market then afterwards once the stops are all exposed there they will keep a ordinary sell order 1.42 that will fill all the exposed stops in fraction of a second then we call the market volatile do you expect to see euro to 1.4 today no i'm not thinking it to come to 1.4 to 4 immediately then the concept of risk appetite is uh, invalidated they will not do that straight you mentioned trend reversal happening in this week do you expect yes this strengthen in this week no i am expecting yes this strengthen only for today and tomorrow from wednesday they could make the usd weaken it more what may be gold for silver doing this yeah gold and silver could gain the levels today during the european session probably to 1440 and 3870 and then they are expected to make the wide range swings during this particular week now let me go back to the other powerpoint presentation no more questions So expected market moves, swing and rise are expected during the Japanese session, and European session a quick rise and then a slow slide could be seen. U.S. session either way moves could be seen, initial drop and then again again could be seen. So that there during the late European session and the early U.S. session there could be a weak beginning false move and slowly tomorrow they will might make a consolidation or a little bit of sideways move. 
and from Wednesday onwards they are expected to make the gaining moves again in the case of Euro and GBP. Thursday for the BY and ECB interest rate decision time they are expected to make further gains in the case of Euro and GBP. Keep that in mind and trade. With regard to the initial lows and the highs in the case of GBP they breached the high and in the case of Australian dollar they breached the low and in the case of Canadian dollar they breached the low. So which indicates that they wanted to make some more time the contrarian moves during this day till early European session and from that of the late European session they could focus on the majors making some corrections and afterwards you could come across the gaining moves again. So try to do buy and sell trades and buy during quick drop and book profit during quick rise that will be the wise way of trading. Thank you one and all for your kind presence here and thanks FX Street for that opportunity and I will come again tomorrow and try to take yet another Asian session live market analysis along with you. Thank you one and all.